In his Guide to the Good Life, entitled Aphorisms on the Wisdom of Life, German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer sets out to write practical advice on how to achieve happiness. This work runs counter to his main philosophy as outlined in the World as Will and Representation. Because it's written from a different perspective, Schopenhauer makes one assumption which changes everything. This work leaves behind his famous pessimism. Accordingly, in elaborating the scheme of a happy existence, I have had to make a complete surrender of the higher metaphysical and ethical standpoint to which my own theories lead. And everything I shall say here will, to some extent, rest upon a compromise, insofar, that is, as I take the common standpoint of every day and embrace the error which is at bottom of it. We have done an entire video on this work if you're interested. There's a link in the description. In the third chapter of the book, dealing with how an individual positions himself among his peers, Schopenhauer makes an elaborate critique of honor culture. This video series will analyze this critique. Schopenhauer distinguishes between two kinds of honor. The first kind we might call universal honor, which exists in every culture. The other kind Schopenhauer calls knightly honor. Most of his critique will center upon this latter sort of honor which arose in the European Middle Ages and is therefore not universal, but rather very specific to a certain culture and a certain time period. But in order to understand what Schopenhauer's problem with knightly honor is, we must first analyze universal honor. That will be the subject of this video. In part 2 we will go over knightly honor. If you don't want to miss this follow-up, please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Let's start with defining our terms. Schopenhauer gives a very precise definition of honor. Honor is, on its objective side, others people's opinion of what we are worth. On its subjective side, it is the respect we pay to this opinion. Maybe that's not saying much. Let's take a look at where honor comes from. We have an innate realization that as humans, we need others to accomplish our true potential. In other words, we need society in order to function. Without society, Schopenhauer says, man is like Robinson Crusoe on a desert island, not capable of accomplishing much. But to enjoy the benefits of living in society, we must prove ourselves worthy of being a part of it. We must contribute. The best way to contribute to society is to fulfill the needs of the other members to the best of our ability. Humans do this by specializing, for example, by becoming doctors, carpenters, scientists, bricklayers, and so on. Each person plays his part, and in turn, he gets to enjoy the value created by other people who are also playing their part. But a man soon discovers that everything depends upon his being useful, not in his own opinion, but in the opinion of others. And so he tries his best to make that favorable impression upon the world, to which he attaches such a high value. And so, honor is born. It is this which brings a blush to his cheeks at the thought of having suddenly to fall in the estimation of others, even when he knows that he is innocent. Conversely, nothing in life gives a man so much courage as the attainment or renewal of the conviction that other people regard him with favor, because it means that everyone joins in to give him help and protection, which is an infinitely stronger bulwark against the ills of life than anything he can do himself. In this way, honor starts out as a mutually beneficial trait of benefits but it soon becomes something else. We start to focus on the opinion of other people about ourselves. Initially, favorable public opinion was a simple side effect of being useful in society. But over time, this side effect becomes the main goal. It's when this transformation occurs that honor becomes what it is today. Schopenhauer calls this civic honor. Civic honor consists in the assumption that we shall pay unconditional respect to the rights of others and, therefore, never use any unjust or unlawful means of getting what we want. The default assumption in polite society is that everyone is honorable, because we must assume everyone has earned their place in society and we would like others to think the same of us as well. Without this assumption, all of society crumbles. There is no civility, no politeness, no cooperation, without the assumption that other people are honorable. Civic honor is the backbone of civilization. Schopenhauer recognized this. No man can disregard honor, and it is a very serious thing, of which everyone should be careful not to make light. The key word in this story is assumption. The default option is to regard everyone around us as honorable until proven otherwise. And because honor is so important to the well-being and functioning of society, once honor has been broken, it cannot be reinstated. It's a permanent loss. 
And because of this permanence in turn, it's vitally important to protect your own honor. And how do you do this? By being a good, trustworthy, productive member of society. You can see how this sets in motion a virtuous cycle. Because everyone assumes everyone else is good and honorable, people actually behave in a good and honorable way. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So far, so good. However, there is a cynical note to be made. Schopenhauer stresses the fact that honor only has an indirect and never an immediate value. In other words, we desire honor not for its own sake, but because of the benefits it confers. This truth has been insisted upon at great length by Alvesius in his chief work De l'Esprit, the conclusion of which is that we love esteem not for its own sake, but solely for the advantages which it brings. And as the means can never be more than the end, that saying of which so much is made, honor is dearer than life itself, is, as I have remarked, a very exaggerated statement. Just how exaggerated the statement is will be the subject of the next video, when Schopenhauer tackles knightly honor, a very specific type of honor which came into existence during the Middle Ages and which has had a steady influence on Western culture up until the present day. Schopenhauer will have a lot to say about this topic, almost all of it negative. If you don't want to miss part 2 in this video series, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell button. In the meantime, we have other videos on Schopenhauer which you might enjoy. Anyway, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.